We will now discuss grain size reduction as a strengthening mechanism. Until now, when we have talked about crystal structures, we have looked at only one crystal. But in real materials, there is a huge number of crystals. And this series of pictures shows how a crystal structure can be formed in a material starting from a melt. If you look in the first picture here, we will start to get some kind of nucleation. When the, when the temperature is falling, we get solidification and we start getting some nucleus. Assume that these yellow squares are nucleus. And then on those nucleus, crystals will continue to grow. Uh, we assume that these squares are unit cells. Uh, the crystals will grow, so these are one crystal, each aggregate like this. It grows out, and as we said before, one unit cell can represent the structure of a whole crystal. Uh, the crystals continue to grow, start uh, impinging each other after a while, and at the end, we end up with a structure like this. And we have, when we have such a structure, we call these grains, crystal grains. Uh, and uh, the borders between the grains are called grain boundaries. These are very important features for the material properties. Uh, here we have shown how a grain structure is formed from a melt. Uh, this structure can be influenced also by heat treatments and different types of deformations, and we'll come back to that later. What will happen when a moving dislocation is approaching a grain boundary? We can see here on this picture that here is one grain, and here another grain, and here we have the grain boundary. You can see here that, that the atoms around the grain boundary are somewhat disordered compared to within a perfect crystal. What is happening here also that the crystallographic orientations is not the same in the both grains. It's very, very rare that they will be the same. And the normal situation will be that actually the crystallographic direction will be totally different in the next grain. So when the dislocation is coming here, it cannot just continue to, not to slip into the new grain. What will happen is that if you are coming more dislocations, in one slip plane it's normally is coming a huge number of dislocations and approaching the boundary. And after a while the, it will be a tension built up and slip planes will activate in the new grain. And now they will activate in directions on planes that are suitable for slip, in this case at a certain angle to the slip plane in the other grain, like this. And of course this is a large obstacle for the dislocating slip when it comes to grain boundary you need to activate a new slip system. So each grain boundary will be very efficient to hinder the dislocation movements and thus to make the material harder and stronger means that the, the, the smaller the grain size is, the more grain boundaries we have. And that means that the smaller the grain size is, the stronger the material will be. This can be illustrated in a diagram like this, where we have the yield strength on this axis and the, and the inverse of the square root of the grain size on this axis. This means that we have larger grain sizes going in this direction and then we get a lower yield strength. When we have smaller grain sizes, we will have a, a larger yield strength. And we see, if you plot it like this, with a linear scale here, uh, and a scale uh, of a square root here, we will get a linear relation. And this is valid for most metals. This relation is also called the whole patch relation. And, the, and it means that the yield strength is actually inversely proportional to the square root of the grain size.